legal and regulatory environment in previous lecture we have seen uh, the global marketing environment where we have seen the social and cultural environment aspects so basically we are talking about the macro environment the environment is divided into two parts micro and macro so we are studying this macro that is larger environment where we are going to act now so uh, this particular lesson today we are going to learn about the political environment legal aspects of environment and regulatory aspects of the environment so learning objectives for today's session we will understand the elements of a country's political environment that can impact global marketing activities also we will define what is international law and describe the main types of legal system found in different parts of the world we will understand the most important business issues that can lead to legal problem for the global markets we will describe the available alternatives for conflict resolution and dispute settlement when doing business outside the home country in general terms outline the regulatory environment in the european union we will start with the political environment so before i start Uh, taking the lectures generally my lectures i observe that it is very monotonous because only i am speaking and there are no uh, discussion points from your point of view or from your side so only simple question i will ask then i will continue with my lecture political environment in india okay so you know what is political environment in india and now we are moving towards the political stability so what is in your opinion whether the foreigners should come and invest in india so 10 days or sorry 10 years before the current situation and how you going to analysis the today situation whether our today's political environment is favorable or not favorable so okay so it is not favorable for a like <clears throat> like If foreigners come and invest today in India, hmm. so uh, like half of the politics is so dirty, it will be a risky point. Of, uh, like it will be risky thing that if uh, foreigners come and invest in India, uh, okay. it will be like uh, slowly, slowly Indians will be outside the market and only foreigners will be ruling the market. Okay. But for for uh, foreigners' point of view, it be uh, it is the good opportunity then. For Indian point of view, if you are talking, then we are in the loss, but the foreigners are in profit. And they are always in profit, sir. India is like a big hub, man, sir, hmm. for business, and we have the largest population. So in our market, there are many consumers and customers. So foreigners will try to invest in India, but it's hmm. our decision. We should be together, and we we should start investing. Like two, three businessmen can start a big business. One big, big businessman can start business. Like we have so many investors, also big businessman. They are investing out out of outside of the India. Like okay. Mukesh Ambani is also investing in UK, London, Canada. He has a construction business in Canada, Toronto. Hmm. So they should invest in India first. Okay. Now uh, second point of discussion is, okay, your one point is valid that uh, if they are going to invest in India, they are in profit and we are in loss okay so as a customer point of view if they foreign people with the extreme quality uh, products and uh, innovative products and services if we ban them then our customers here will not go uh, get those products and uh, if we are making entry free for them okay or we are inviting them to invest and start their businesses then they will first give tough competition to our local entrepreneurs and local businesses and to withstand that competition our local business quality they must have must to be enhanced they must enhance their quality of business so ultimately it will have a positive effect that our businessmen or local businessmen will enhance the quality of their businesses their products and services and ultimately the customer also will get benefit and our local businesses 
will also get benefit so what what is what is your opinion sir ki like due to increase in the competition or the race the local businessmen will also give good quality to the consumer so that our indian businessmen will also make their quality more good hmm superior It quality is beneficial for consumers consumers also and uh, maybe in future Okay. Uh, we found something like uh, better quality than them then yes, we will, uh, we will, uh, we will uh, get, uh, go to their country and we will start doing business there and yes, we, we will ruin uh, as, their business sir as our government focusing on local for local hmm. because uh, still as a carpets and uh, kashmiri shawl hmm. sir we make in india within and we will export also but we didn't get a very high amount but as of now government focusing more right so this is about political environment there are n number of factors in political environment uh, many of the things are in debate like uh, we are inviting okay one one more point of debate or some discussion from so many years uh, i think in 1994 rajiv gandhi government have started this and they have started foreign uh, foreign direct investment in india before that we are having so many restrictions okay now Uh, we are allowing businesses okay but still we are not allowing foreign universities to come in india and uh, start uh, their universities okay so still we are having the local universities and if you want to study like if students like you uh, want to study then you have to go abroad and you have to study so there are still uh, still there are restrictions uh, for the foreign universities to come and invest or to start their universities in india so what is your opinion regarding this uh bin sir indian student go outside so they are facing problem or from foreign country will come in in our country uh no any point of view can like if like uh, i want my children to study in uh, like howard university okay uh, so if howard uh, howard university is uh, setting uh, their universities in india or in pune okay they are having one branch in pune then i will be more than happy but our government is not allowing them okay so i have to send my children to uh, us or uk for the further studies so that is my point of view okay so uh, what no, is your sorry. opinion what is your opinion regarding this so uh, me me simple question is uh, should the restriction should be banned or should the restriction should be like uh, loose banned in where sir means in india or also no, no, in the, india the restrictions are very uh, like it is good i agree with government we should not allow foreign universities to come here and put their colleges because i feel it is not about the brand name of the college or brand name of the owner mm-hmm. it is all about the atmosphere the student the faculty the uh, small small employees from uh, like pun se leke like you know sir principal sir each and every like the atmosphere is there in college so they, they, like in our also colleges for example i am uh, iit pawai we have that atmosphere sir in india also we have that good colleges but I don't think sir they should come here and start their universities. Then Indian like origin कुछ है क्या नहीं ना sir भी if they are in they are also sir, investing in businesses they are investing in education. Sir, uh, I will give the example. I am vlogging hmm. from Bihar here yeah, sir. So you know have you heard about the Nalanda University? Nalanda University I know. Yeah, uh, Nalanda University. Now it's destroyed due to sir uh, all the all kingdoms are come and they destroyed. But uh, from other country, they are coming and study, sir. It's same thing. Uh, you have seen now. Many foreigners they come here and will they go outside from India. So, who study who का काफी beneficial होता है, sir. क्योंकि काफी पैसा मैं एक मगर university है, sir. वहाँ पे बहुत इस का पढ़ाई होता है. हम्म. तो उनके काफी manual fees हैं यहाँ पे. तो यहाँ वहाँ के पढ़ते हैं. और वो जब वो बाहर जाते हैं, तो उनकी काफी valuable है. सो सेम थिंग है जब हम बाहर जाते हैं तो वहां से जब पढ़ के हम आते हैं तो विषय की आवर डिग्री इज मोर वैल्यूबल बट एज नाउ आवर पीएम इज सेइंग दैट कि फॉरेन का भी सिलेबस यहां पे इंडिया में होना चाहिए मतलब चेंज होना चाहिए डैम क्योंकि वही पुरानी सिलेबस चल रही है सर कहीं भी देखिए ना पुणे यूनिवर्सिटी में चाहे कहीं भी पैटर्न शुड बी चेंज 
okay so lot of this uh, discussion we have done okay so uh, whether now we are studying the topic which is called as international uh, uh, management okay so international business global management and international management or rather we are studying international marketing okay so we should know if we want to develop our business outside the boundary of our country okay then we have to go internationally then before going to that country we should know the uh, cultural background of that study the social uh, background and social aspects of this study uh, of their country that we have seen in previous chapter okay only a few days uh, back uh, i have just seen one advertisement of liril now you have seen the advertisement of liril in india okay and i have seen this uh, liril advertisement same product because unilever product is there and unilever is there all, all over the world so same life boy same lux same liril every everything what they are producing and selling in india they are same selling in bangladesh and pakistan also our neighborhood country so i have seen one advertisement in pakistan so same liril advertisement but uh, that girl was in uh, punjabi dress and not in the fountain okay uh, i hope you have understood the difference between the cultures okay in india they can show uh, such type of things but in pakistan maybe that is not allowed so maybe that is de uh, depending on the culture of the uh, country so whatever your uh, the culture is going to suit uh, then similarly you have to do the marketing or you have to do the promotional activities or advertisement and so on so now today we are going to uh, talk about uh, the political uh, aspects and legal aspects and some regulatory environment type of aspect so we will start with now uh, political environment a uh, global marketing activities take place within the political environment of the government institutions political parties and organizations through which a country people and rural exercise the power we have seen in previous chapter that the notion has a unique culture and reflects its society each nation has the political culture now china is having different political culture korea south korea is having different political culture usa and india pakistan they are having different political culture as such that political culture reflects the relative importance of the government and the legal system and provides a context within which the individuals and the corporations understand their relationship in the political system any company doing business outside its home country should carefully study the political culture in the target country and analyze the silent issues arising from the political environment these include the governing party uh, governing parties attitude towards the uh, sover uh, sovereignty that is supreme power then political risk taxes then uh, threat of equity or dilutions and exportations like that so we will talk about now nation states and uh, sovereignty that is sovereignty means uh, supreme power so this uh, supreme power can be defined as the supreme and independent political authority a century ago us supreme court justice like chief justice uh, his name was fuller he uh, said that every uh, sovereign state is bound to respect the independence of every other sovereign state and the courts in one country will not sit in the judgment on the acts of the government and another done within the territory so government action taken in the name of sovereignty occurs in the context of two important criteria one is the country's stage of development and the political and economical system in the place of the country we have seen in second lesson that economies of individual nations may be classified as industrialized or newly industrialized or developing developing economies many government in developing countries exercise the control over the nation's economic development by passing the uh, protectionist law and regulations their objective is to encourage the economic development by protecting emerging and strategic industries government leaders can also engage in uh, cronyism and provide favor for the family members or good friends for example uh, former indonesian president 
Suharto established a national car program that guaranteed tax break and uh, tariff uh, privileges to a company established in South Korea by his youngest son. The United States or European Union and Japan responded by taking the matter to uh, World Trade Organization. So conversely, when many nations reach advanced stages of the economic development, their government declare, at least in theory, they declare the practice or policies that restrain free trade in is illegal. Antitrust laws and regulations are established to promote the fair competition. Advanced country uh, laws often define and preserve the nation's social orders. Laws may extend to political culture and intellectual activities and social conduct. In France, for example, laws forbid to use the foreign words such as Lee weekend or Lee marketing in official document. Also, French law passed in 1996 require at least 40% of the songs played by the popular radio station must be in Fran uh, French, French language. So that is the restriction they have given. So if you want to do the uh, radio type of business in France, 40% of the songs or popular song must be played that should be in French language. Companies that may affected positively or negatively by the legislations act also given uh, for the use of advertisement as a vehicle for expressing their position on the values. Now some observers believe that global market integration is eroding the national economic sovereignty. Then economic consultant Neil Sauce uh, his name is Neil Sauce. Uh, he notes that the ultimate resource of the government is power. And we are seeing repeatedly uh, that the willpower of the government can overcome by persistent attacks from the marketplace. Now, is this the uh, disturbing trend? If the issue is uh, framed in terms of marketing, then the concept of exchange comes to the fore. That is the uh, nations may be willing to give up sovereignty in return for something of value. If countries can increase their share of the world trade and increase national income, perhaps they will be willing to get some sovereignty. In Europe, the individual European Union countries are giving up the rights to have their own currencies. The uh, right set of their own products and standards and making the sacrifice in exchange for improving the market access. What is political risk? Political risk is the possibility of change in country's political environment or government policies. So if there is a current situation like suppose one government is there and that is allowing or they are having some taxes like only 5% for the FDIs. Now, if uh, the current situation is likely to be changed and another party will be going to rule, uh, rule the nation, and if they are going to change the policies, then whatever we are targeting as the business, that we'll, we may face some problems. So, before investing in any particular country or nation, you should understand what is companies. Uh, sorry, what is country's political environment and what is the political risk? So political environment or government policy that would adversely affect a company's ability to operate efficiently and profitability. Uh, one professor, his uh, name is written there, uh, Ethan. So Ethan, a professor instead has noted that perhaps the greatest threats to the operations of the global co uh, corporations and those that are most difficult to manage arises out of the political environment in which they conduct their businesses. One day a foreign company is welcome member of the local community and the next day the opportunistic politicians may will fight. So in such situations it will be difficult for us to do a business in that nation. Political research, uh, sorry, political risk can deter a company from investing abroad. To put it another way, when a high level of uncertainty characteristic characterizes a company's political environment, 
it may have difficulty in attracting the foreign investments. However, the professor Capstan points it out that the executions often fail in the conceptualization of the political risk because they are not studied the political sciences. For this reason, they have not been exposed to the issues to the students of politics. Ask about the activities of the global companies. A strong argument for a liberal art education and the current events must be a part of the information agenda. For example, business people need to stay appraised for the information and evolution of the political parties. So all the uh, marketing students must understand uh, the some bits of the political situations that is currently going uh, throughout the world. So valuable sources uh, of information that includes the Economist or the Financial Times or the other business uh, periodicals. Uh, so you can get the information in uh, the economic uh, Economist in Intelligence. So the website is uh, www.eiu.com or Geneva based the business environmental risk intelligence. So that is famous like Berry. So www.berry.com. So in, uh, here you can get various information or latest information. Also prsgroup.com that publish up to date political risk reports of individual countries markets. These commercial sources uh, vary somewhat in the criteria that constitute the political risk. For example, uh, the let me I will just show you one table. Yes. So, categories of the political risk. Suppose war. Then Barry says that the uh, factionalization of the political spectrum and or PRS group it is political turmoil probability. So, n number of uh, uh, categories are there. Okay. So crime, corruption, bureaucracy, then transparency uh, of the doing business or fairness, then international disputes and so on. And you can have so many discussions in various uh, websites and various uh, reports. You can uh, call them as political risk reports. So you can take one example that political uh, situations in the Russian government create a high level of political risk. Uh, during the uh, two turns of the Russian's uh, president, uh, Putin implemented reforms in uh, and if effort to pave the way of Russia's membership in WTO and to attract the foreign investment. In uh, 2008, uh, the uh, Medvedev uh, he was elected as the president. Putin became the prime minister, and it was generally perceived as the uh, 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 the most powerful member of the ruling tandem. The Russian government has a number of bills pending uh, that is adopted will strengthen the intellectual property rights and contract law. Meanwhile, the uh, level of political risk remains high. The compounding matters, in fact, the Russia's, Russian's economy has been severely impacted by the global economic crisis. So uh, the current political climate in the rest of the Central and Eastern Europe is still characterized by the various degree of uncertainty. As ranked in economic intelligence uh, units, that is EIU, uh, the political instability index Hungary, Albania, then Latvia represents moderate, moderate risk uh, level. Hungary and Latvia have already achieved the middle uh, upper middle class income status. Although Latvia is projected uh, to grow more slowly, Albania prog progress is uh, trans uh, transitioning to a market economy has attached investment from abroad. Moreover, products are made in Albania, are finding acceptance in global market. The evidences can seen in the success of uh, Doniana. So, a shoe manufacturing was the uh, founded by the Albanian entrepreneurial uh, ship development. That uh, attention to risk assessment throughout the region should be ongoing to determine when the risk is decreased to level of access to the management. Now, uh, various companies uh, can purchase the insurance of the offset potential risk arising from the political environment. Let's say in Japan, Germany, France, Britain and United States and other industrialization nations, various agencies offer the investment insurance to the corporations doing the business abroad. Uh, the overseas uh, private 
Investment Corporation that is OPIC. So you can find out the information is www.opic.gov that provides various type of political risk insurance to US companies. Uh, in Canada, the Export Development Corporation performs a similar function. OPIX uh, activities come under the scrutiny in 1997 when the Clinton administration proposed reauthorizing it along with the Export Import Bank. Some legislation wanted to disseminate the both agencies as a part of efforts to reduce the government investment in both. The legislation criticized the agencies for providing unnecessary subsidiaries to the large corporations. Now we will talk about some taxes. You know previously we were implementing VAT. Now what we are implementing? We are implementing GST. Okay, so that was the uh, government decision to implement GST in throughout the India. So maybe the financial experts they will talk more about or you, you may find some articles regarding the advantages or disadvantages of uh, GST over VAT or VAT over GST. So that debate goes on. But now GST is there in India. So governments rely on tax revenues to generate funds necessary for the social services, for the military operations and other expenditures. Unfortunately, the government taxation policies on the sales good and services frequently motivates the companies and individuals to profit by not paying the taxes. In China, import duties have dropped since the country joined WTO. Even so, many goods are still subject to double digit duties plus a 70% of VAT value added tax. As a result, significant quantities of oil, cigarettes, uh, photo, uh, photographic films, then personal computers and other products are uh, smuggled, uh, smuggled, uh, smuggled, sorry, smuggled in China. So in some instances, custom documents are uh, falsified to undercount the goods in a shipment. The Chinese military has uh, allegedly escorted goods into the country as well. Ironically, the global companies can still profit from the practices. Uh, it is been estimated, for example, 90% of the foreign cigarettes sold in China are smuggled. For uh, Philip Morris, this means annual sale of $100 million to distributors in Hong Kong who then smuggle the uh, smokes uh, across the border. High excise and VAT taxes can also encourage the uh, legal cross-border shipment or shipping as the consumers go abroad in search of good values. In Great Britain, for example, the Wine and Spirit Association estimates that the average cars returning from the France are loaded with 80 bottles of wine. Corporate taxation in, uh, is the another issue. The, High level of political risk currently evident in Russia can be attributed in the part of uh, ex uh, excessively high taxes on business operations. So high taxes encourages uh, many companies or many enterprises to engage in cash or better transactions that are off the books and uh, shuttled from the tax, uh, eyes of the tax authorities. This in turn has created a liquidity squeeze that prevents companies for, uh, from paying the wages to the employees. Uh, unpaid uh, workers uh, can contribute to political instability. Meanwhile, the Russian government is pursuing a tough new tax policy in the efforts of uh, shrink the Russian budgets and uh, qualify the IMF loans. However, such policies should not have the effect on uh, deterring the foreign investment. Meanwhile, the global companies are being caught up in the chaos. In July 1998, the tax collectors seized the dozens of automobiles belonging to Johnson & Johnson, Russian division and froze the group's assets. The authorities claim that Johnson & Johnson owed $19 million in back taxes. So the diverge geographical activity 
of the global corporation also requires a special attention to the tax laws. Many companies make efforts to minimize their tax liability by shifting the income or the location of the income. For example, it has been examined that the tax minimization by the foreign companies doing businesses in the United States cost the US government billion of dollars each year in the loss of revenue. In one approach called earning stripping, the foreign companies reduce the earnings by making the loans to US affiliates rather than using the direct investments to the uh, finance US activities. The United States subsidiaries can deduct the invest to pay on the such loans and thereby reduce its tax burden. Now we will talk about the uh, seizure of assets. Now before that, have you heard about uh, Bhopal Durghatna okay, or Bhopal accident? Yes, yes. Okay. So yes, yes. So what happened in Bhopal? Bhopal gas incident or accident? If you remember, there are uh, so many lives that have been gone through that Durghatna and accident and uh, we, are, we were not having any law regarding that. So, who was the owner? Yes, and uh, the, the CEO... Right, right, right. So, uh, the owner, he very easily escaped from India that time because we are not having any laws. Okay, the, uh, the still, uh, who, whoever the uh, yes, uh, that, that we are not having and uh, that is that was the problem and that has been rectified now but still uh, those uh, who are who are who are guilty in that they have not been punished uh, from that okay so that is one point I just wanted to mention so we will talk about now a seizure of assets uh, the ultimate threat to a government can pose towards the company in uh, seizing the uh, seizing its assets the Exportation refers to the government action to dispose a foreign company or investment and compensation is generally provided, although not often in the prompt or effective and adequate manner provided for the international standards. If no compensation is provided, the action is referred to as the uh, confiscations. The international law. One second. Yes, the international law is generally interpreted as the prohibiting uh, the any act by the government to take the foreign property without the compensation. Nationalization generally broader in scope uh, than the export right, uh, export rightization. It occurs when the government takes control of uh, some of the uh, all enterprises in a particular industry. International law recognizes the nationalization as a uh, legitimate exercise of the government power as long as uh, the act sacrifices the public purpose and accompanied by the adequate payment. In uh, 1959, for example, a newly empowered Castro government nationalized the property belonging to the American sugar producers in uh, retaliations uh, for the American import quotas on sugar. Cuban owned, that is Cuba, Cuba, Cuban owned production sources were not nationalized. Castro offered the compensation in the form of Cuban government bonds, which was adequate under the Cuban law. The United States Department viewed this particular act of the nationalization as discriminatory and the compensation offered as inadequate. More recently, Venezuela President Hugo nationalized the Electrolyte D uh, Carcass, a utility company, the name of the company uh, that is simply uh, called as CAN TV. So, it is a telecommunication provider. The Venezuelan government paid uh, the e, uh, sorry, AES Corporation approximately million. Uh, 739 million dollar for electricity uh, side the uh, carcasses 
so uh, short of the uh, outright expo uh, exportization and internationalization and nationalization the trades uh, we can term that creeping expropriations that has been applied to the limitations of the economic activities uh, of the foreign firms in particular companies these have uh, included limitations in uh, terms of profit dividend royalties and technical assist assistant fees from the local investments on the technological agreement soon we will talk about uh, the copyrights and uh, intellectual property rights now other issues include uh, includes the increased local content requirements then uh, uh, quotas for hiring the local na na nationals then uh, price control and other uh, restrictions affecting the return on investments roi global companies have also suffered discriminatory tariff tariffs and non tariff barriers that limits the market entry of certain industrial and consumer goods as well as discriminating laws on the patent and trademarks intellectual property restrictions have had practical effect of eliminating or drastically reducing the protection of pharmaceutical products in uh, mid 1970 jammu and kashmir and the foreign investment uh, investors in india had to submit uh, to a host government regulations to retain the majority equity positions in the company were uh, already established many of the rules were later copied in the uh, whole or the part of the malaysia indonesia philippines nigeria and brazil by the late 1980s after a lost decade in latin america characterized by debt crisis and low uh, gnp growth the law makers uh, reserved many of these restriction restrictions and discriminating laws the goal was to again attract the foreign direct investments and badly needed western te te technology the end of the cold war and uh, risk restructuring of political alliances contributed significantly to the changes we will talk about international law now the international law may be defined as the rules and the principles that the nation states consider uh, binding upon themselves international law uh, pertains to the property trade immigration and other areas that have traditionally been under the jurisdiction uh, juris, uh, juris of the individual nations international law applies only to the extent that countries are willing to assume all rights and obligations in these areas the roots of modern international law can be traced back in 17th century peace of the uh, west fear early international laws Uh, was concerned with the waging war establishing peace and other political issues such as diplomatic recognition of the new national entities and government although uh, elaborated the international rules gradually merged and covering for example the status of the uh, neutral nations then creation of laws governing the commerce provided by the state by state basis on the 19th century international law still has the function in upholding the order although in although it is a broader sense that dealing with the problems arising from the war the first international law was essentially an amalgam of the uh, treaties the codes and agreements a uh, as trade grew among the nations order in commercial affairs assume increasing importance the law had originally dealt only with the nation as entities but a growing body of the jaw rejected the idea that only nations can be subject to the international laws we'll take one example that uh, the court uh, whose function is to decide in accordance with international law such as disputes as are submitted to shall apply one 
international conventions whether general or particular establishing the rules expressly recognized by the contesting states the internationalization of the customs as evidences of the general practice accepted as laws then the general uh, principle of law recognized by the civilian nations civilized nations and subject to promises of article 59 judic uh, judicial decisions and the teaching of the most highly qualified uh, publics of the various nations as subsidiaries means of the determination of rules of laws now here the figure shows that located in hog the international court of justice that is called as icj international court of justice is a judicial arm of the united nations the court's 15 judges are elected to nine year term the primary function of this international court of justice is to settle the dispute among the different countries according to the international laws the icj also offers advice on legal issues submitted by various international agencies so this is the uh, photograph of that okay so we will talk about now islamic law civil law so common law versus uh, civil law first we will talk about that then we will talk about islamic law so private international law is the body of law that applies to dispute arising from the commercial transaction between the companies of different nations as noted the law governing the com commerce emerged gradually leading to a major split in the legal system between various countries the story of the uh, law in the western world can be traced in uh, two sources like rome Uh, from which the constitute european civil law tradition originated and english common law from which the us legal system is originated a civil law country in which is one of which uh, the legal system reflects the structural concepts and principles of the roman empire in the 16th century and in a common law country uh, many disputes are decided by reliance and authorities of the past uh, judicial decisions like past cases so a common law or common legal system is based on the concept of uh, pre uh, precedence or then sometimes called as uh, stare uh, decisis uh, sorry decisis uh, decisis the precedent is the uh, notion that past uh, judi uh, judicial decisions on a particular issues are binding on a court when the same issue is presented later this description in somewhat cryptic because it is easier to observe the operations precedent than to define it the american and english law legislations in origin the law inferred from the past judicial judicial decisions is equal in important to set the law in the courts the common law countries often rely on the codification in certain areas the us uniform commercial courts is one example but these courts are not all inclusive the systematic statements found in civil law countries various countries like uh, eastern and central europe uh, results from the establishing of the legal systems in the post uh, communist era a struggle of sort of has broken out broken out the consultants representing both common law and civil law countries are trying to influence the process in much uh, central europe and including poland hungary and czech republic the german civil law uh, tradition is uh, prevails as a result banks not only take the deposits and make loan but also engage in buying and selling the securities in western europe particularly in russia the uh, united states has the greater influence 
the germany has accused the united states of promoting a system so complex that it requires a legion of lawyers a few words on the islamic law the legal system in the middle eastern countries is identified with the laws of islam which are associated with the one and only one god the almighty in islamic law the sharia is the comprehensive code of governing the muslim conduct in all the areas of life including the business the code is derived from two sources first is uh, the quran the holy book written in the arabic that is the record uh, of the uh, revelations made by the uh, prophet uh, muhammad by allah the second source is uh, hadith which is based on the life saying and practices of this muhammad in particular this hadith spell out uh, spell out uh, different products and practices that are forbidden they are called they are calling them as uh, practice which are forbidden are haram uh, the orders and the instructions found in the quran are analogous to the code of laws the guidelines in hadith corresponds to common law any western doing the business in malaysia or middle east should have a minimum uh, a minimum understanding of the islamic law and its implication on the commercial activity brewers uh, for example must refrain from advertisement uh, advertising the beers on billiards or in the uh, local language newspapers and so on now uh, side stepping the legal problems that is important business issues so clearly the global legal environment is very dynamic and complex in nature therefore the best course to follow is to get help from the legal experts however the astute uh, proactive marketers can deal great deal to prevent the conflicts from arising from the first place especially concerning issues such as establishment jurisdictions patents and trademarks antitrust licensing and trade secrets barbary and advertising and other promotional tools jurisdictions company personal working abroad Uh, should understand the context to which they are subject to the jurisdictions of the host country courts uh, juris, uh, jurisdictions uh, pet, uh, pretends to pertains the global marketing in source uh, to concern uh, courts authority to rule on a particular type of issues arising outside a nation's border or to exercise the power over the individuals or entities from different countries employees of the foreign companies working in united states must understand the courts have the uh, jurisdictions to the extent that the company can demonstrate to doing the business in the state in which the court sits the court may examine whether the foreign company maintains the office solicits the businesses maintains the bank accounts and the other properties or has agents or employees in the other states the question uh, jurisdictions play an important role in the two recent trade uh, disputes one pitted volkswagen ag against the general motors after general motors worldwide held of the purchasing then it was hired by the volkswagen in 1992 his formal employer accused him of taking the trade secrets Volkswagen Volkswagen accepted the US court jurisdictions is in the disputes although the company's lawyer requested that US district court uh, in uh, Detroit transfer in the case to the German jurisdiction was uh, not the issue in the trade dispute that pitted the uh, Kodak against the Fuji Fuji photo film Kodak uh, uh, alleged uh, that the German uh, sorry Japanese government helped Fuji in japan by blocking the distribution of the kodak film the us government turned that the case over wto despite of the opinion expressed by so many experts that 
WTO lacks the judifications in the complaints over the trade and the competition policies. Intellectual property rights, you know, intellectual property rights includes patents, trademarks and copyrights. So patents and trademarks that are protected in one country are not necessarily protected in another. As global marketers must ensure that patents and trademarks are registered in each country where the business is conducted. So what is patent? Patent is a formal legal document that gives an inventor the exclusive right to make, use and sell an invention for a specific period of time. Typically, the invention represents an incentive leap. Sorry, uh, the invention represents an inventive leap that a novel or non-obvious. A trademark is defined as the distinctive mark, distinctive motto, distinctive device that emboldened that the manufacturer affixes to a particular product or package to distinguish from the goods produced by the another manufacturer. And the copyright established ownership of a written, recorded, performed or film creative art. Infringement of the intellectual property can take a variety of forms. Counterfeiting is the unauthorized copying and production of a product. An association counterfeit or imitation, imitation means copy. Imitation uses a product name that differs slightly from a well-known brand, but also close uh, enough that the customers will associate it with as a genuine product. Now, one uh, small story I will tell you. One of my students, he uh, started the floor uh, type of uh, products. Floor means wheat floor, then rice floor, dhokla floor and all that. So he started with the name Floor King. Okay. So he was not having idea that in Mumbai, Floor King is already a brand uh, which is very much popular and they are having their trademark also. So he was not aware about that because he just striked the name Floor and uh, he, want, he wanted to be a king in that business. So he uh, gave that name Floor King and he started his business. Uh, he was doing that business for two, three years and it, that business was only limited to the local area of Kothrur Pune. Uh, one day what happened that one of the employee of the uh, Floor King that was established brand in Mumbai, he came to uh, one of the shop in Kothrur and he found that product Floor King of my student in one of the shop. And he was just wondered that uh, how that product is reached to Pune. But he found that uh, the font was different and the uh, like those who are producing, uh, those are different company. So he uh, took that product to the own company uh, like uh, in Mumbai and he showed that product to the Mumbai people. And they have filed a case of uh, the copyright uh, or the copyright and trademark type of things to the court. Now my student said that I was not aware of the entire thing. So uh, finally what happened that the court told him to change the name. So again, my student was not having uh, such a large business. So he modified the name again and he started uh, with the another name. So this can happen to anyone. So that is related to the trademark, copyright and patent. So a third type of uh, counterfeiting is the privacy, sorry, piracy. Piracy, you know, so unauthorized publications of or uh, reproduction of the copyright work. Even there are a number of uh, foreign books which are available, uh, of soft copy are available on internet and what we are doing, we are just uh, doing the photocopy or Xerox of that book that is also not uh, allowed. So uh, contributing the uh, piracy 
that are particular important in industries such as motion pictures then recorded music then computer softwares then uh, textbook publishing also so companies in these industries produce products that can be easily duplicated and distributed on a mass basis so there are some laws regarding that so in united states in particular had vested invest in intellectual property right protection around the globe because it is the home of many companies in the industries just mentioned so yes are having uh, vast publishing houses then software making then music recording and motion pictures that is films and all however united states uh, faces significant challenges in countries such as china as one of the expert had noted that current attempts in establishing intellectual property laws particularly on the chinese mainland uh, have been deeply flawed, uh, flawed in their failure to address the difficulties in uh, reconciling the laws legal values institutions and forms granted in the west with the legacy of the china's past and the constraint imposed by the present circumstances in united states where patents then trademarks and copyrights are registered with the federal patent office the patent holder retain all the rights for his life and of the patent even if the product is produced or not produced or even not sold the trademark act which was done in 1946 also known as lanham Lan- Lan- act uh, covers the trademark in united states the uh, president reagan signed the trademark law revisions act in november 1988 the law makes easier for the companies to register a new trademark patent and trademark protection in the united states is very good and united states law relies on the precedent of obviously decided court cases for guidance to register a patent in europe a company has the option of filling the country by country basis or applying to the european uh, patent office in munich for patent registration for the uh, specific number of countries the third option uh, will be soon available that is the community patent convention will be uh, possible for an inventor to file a patent that is uh, effective of the 27 signatory nations currently patent producing uh, producers in europe are quite expensive in part uh, because the cost of uh, translating the technical documents into the language of the uh, european nation countries at mid of 2004 is uh, translation issues uh, remain unsolved in india also uh, if you want to file a patent then for filing a patent uh, the cost is only 4000 rupees but uh, generally it got rejected it gets rejected because you are not having the technically sound uh, thing now there are agencies that uh, translate your work into the technical documents and for the entire procedure you may require approximately 35 to 40000 rupees to file a patent and after that if uh, your patent is rejected then your entire uh, money is lost and you have to file another patent and again you have to invest another money so that is the uh, thing in europe now this is one example you just uh, see this diagram and just read the example of trademark then i will show you another example So in 2011, Europe's Court of the First Instance ruled that both companies can use the uh, trademark in UK. Another example: luxury goods marketers Louis Vuitton. Just read this.
a cartoon for you just read that So headquartered in Geneva, Switzerland, the World Intellectual Property Organization, that is called as WIPO, is one of the 16 specialized uh, subunits of the United Nations. The WIPO's mission is to promote and protect the intellectual property throughout the world. See, WIPO views the intellectual property rights as critical element in economic development. It has created illustrated uh, illustrated booklets that explains the trademark, copyright, and the intellectual property issues in a straightforward, easy to understand manner. Local agencies can access and print the booklets directly from Vipo's internet site. So this is one of the picture from that Vipo. So Thomas Baum, the commercial attaché from United States, Beijing. There are two ways to fight piracy in China. The first is the Coca-Cola method. You make your product so well that you distribute it so cheaply that there is no money left for the counterfeiters. Or the second is the uh, Budweiser approach, the Budweiser beer can in China have a fluted edges that can difficult to manufacture. Chinese companies can brew beer and uh, called it uh, Budweiser, but they cannot put uh, yet put it into uh, what it really look like. So if you don't want to have the intellectual property rights plan, as you are uh, having the business plan, you are in trouble in China. So many of the uh, books or uh, the articles I have read that if you are having some patent somewhere in uh, United States, then these people are directly copying that without uh, having any botheration of the copyrights, without ha having any botheration of patent, and they are directly using your system, uh, your uh, codes and uh, your products, and uh, So, in 1986, the International Union of the Protection of Literacy and Artistic Property was formed that is known as the Brent's Connections uh, that was having the landmark agreement on copywriting the protections. References to the convention pop in in some of the unexpected places for example as the credit rolls on the end of the late show uh, with the David Letterman. The following messages uh, be appeared that uh, worldwide uh, Pants Incorporation in the author of the motion pictures for purpose of burn convention and all the laws giving the uh, effect theatre. The unauthorized duplication, distribution, exhibitions you, uh, or um, use may result in civil abilities or criminal or restrictions. Now these are the companies receiving the most US patents, uh, the data is of 2009. So IBM is having the 4,887 4, patents, followed by Samsung Electronics, Microsoft, Canon, Panasonic, Toshiba, Sony, Intel, Seiko, uh, Epson, and HP. So uh, from where you can get one patent. So patent copyright trademark and now we will talk about antitrust. So antitrust laws in the United States and other countries are designed to combat the restrictive business practices and to encourage the competition. Agencies such as US Federal Trade Commission, Japan's uh, Freight Trade Commission and European Commission enforces an antitrust law. Now, some of the legal experts believe that the pressures of the global competition have resulted in increased incidence of price fixing and uh, collusion among the companies. 
as then ftc chairman uh, robert uh, pitos pitoski he said that uh, four years tariffs and trade barriers block the global trade now those are uh, failing uh, that those are falling and we are forced to confront the privatization of the anti uh, competitive behavior that often remains from the past decades the com uh, competitive authorities of the Euro uh, european commissions has had the power to uh, prohibit the agreements and practices uh, that prevent uh, restrict and distort the competition the commission has uh, jurisdictions over the european based companies as well as non european uh, ones that uh, generate significant revenues in europe such as microsoft for example the commission can block a proposed merge or joint venture approve it with only minor modifications or demand a substantial uh, concessions before the granting the approvals the commission begins with the preliminary study of the uh, proposed deal then uh, serious concern can lead to the depth of investigation lasting the several months antitrust ruling so we are having the global companies involved then global antitrust reviews and antitrust reviews in usa so you can read this table these are some examples these are compiled by various authors In United States, most cartels are illegal. One uh, notable expectation, however, has a direct impact on global marketing. A number of world's major shipping lines, including in U.S.-based uh, Steel Land Services and Denmark's A.P. Moller uh, line, have enjoyed the exemptions from the antitrust law since the uh, Pass Passage Act of uh, Shipping Act, 19. 16 the law was originally enacted to ensure the reliability today it has estimated the cartel results in shipping prices that are 18% higher that uh, they will be uh, shippers uh, set prices independently attempts in recent years to change the law has been unsuccessful licensing and trade secrets licensing is a contractual agreement in which licensors allow the licensee to use the patent trademark trade secrets and technology or other intangible assets in return for loyalty uh, royalty of payments or other form of compensation so us laws do not regulate the licensing process per se uh, as do the technology transfer laws in european countries Australia Japan and many developing countries the duration of the licensing agreements and the amount of royalties of a company can receive are uh, considered a matter of commercial negotiation between the licensors and licensee and there are no government restrictions on remittances of the royalty abroad important considerations in licensing includes analysis of what assets of a firm may offer to licensee or how to price the assets and whether to grant only the uh, make the product or uh, use of the product or to sell off the product that you have to give a proper license some figures related to the corruption uh, ranking so these are the countries where corruption is lowest so you are having on 9.3 that means lowest corruption if you just google now these figures are of 2010 latest figure new zealand is at number 1 uh, with uh, very less corruption or you can say negligible corruption so according to this table denmark new zealand singapore finland sweden canada netherlands australia switzerland and norway are in top 10 and uh, 
these at the uh, right hand side you are having some nation uh, countries where the corruption is high somalia myanmar afghanistan iraq uzbekistan turkmenistan sudan chad burundi and 160 i have first time hearing that word equatorial guinea i don't know okay so while doing the business in another country you should know the uh, bribery and corruption and other legal ethical issues also so history does not record a burst of international outrage when uh, charles schwab the head of the bethlehem steel at the beginning of the 20th century presented a, a 2 lakh dollar diamond and pure necklace to the mistress of the kaz alexander's third nephew in return uh, for this consideration uh, uh, bethlehem steel won the contract to supply the rails in the trans siberian railroad today in the post soviet uh, era the western companies are aging uh, being lured by the emerging opportunities in the central and eastern europe here as the middle east there are other parts of the world are finding bribery in a way of life and corruption is widespread bribery is the corrupt business practices of demanding or offering some type of consideration typically cash payment when a negotiation a cross borderly a us companies in particular are constrained in uh, their responses to such situations by us government policies of a post uh, uh, age then uh, transparency is international uh, compiles the annual report of ranking of the countries in terms of uh, cpi cpi is a corruption uh, perception index and you can find this report on www.transparency.org now in united states the another report that is foreign corrupt practices act fcpa is the legacy of the westrich uh, scandal during the richard nixon's uh, presidency uh in the course of his investigation at uh, water age uh, special uh, discovered that more than 300 american companies had made the undisclosed payment to the foreign officials totaling hundreds and millions of billion dollars so corruption is probably the most immediate threat and difficulty that uh, any business faces in russia and uh, trade is increasing Uh, that is the uh, quote from the Carlo Gallo, uh, who is the business risk consultant. Now, what should a U.S. company do if the competitors are willing to offer a bribe? So there are two alternatives. Of course, can be possible. One is to ignore the bribery and act. Uh, as it does not exist the other is to recognize the existence of bribery and evaluate its effect on customers purchase decision uh, as if they are just another element of marketing mix uh, the overall value of companies offer must be as good as or better than the competitors uh, overall offering bribe included it uh, can be possible to offer a lower price a better product better distribution or better advertising to offset the value added by the bribe the best line of defense is to have a product that is clearly superior to its competition in such case bribe should not sway or purchase decisions alternately clear uh, superiority in services and local representation may trip your skills now we are moving to the uh, second last part now regulatory environment and conflict resolution two parts are remaining conflict resolution dispute settlement and uh, litigations so degree of legal corporations and harmony in, in the uh, european uh, union is unique and stay in part from the existence of code of law a common bond other regional organization have made far less progress in towards the harmonization countries vary in their approach towards the conflict resolution 
United States has more lawyers than the any other country in the world, and is argued uh, by the most of the uh, litigious nation of the earth. Uh, in part, uh, this is the reflection of low context nature of American culture and spirit of uh, confrontational competitiveness. Other factors can contribute to differing the attitude towards the litigations. For example, in many European countries or European nations, uh, class action uh, lawsuits are not allowed. Also, European lawyers cannot undertake cases on a contingency fee basis. However, changes is in the air and European experiences a broad political shift from the welfare state. In addition to the various problems from the differentiation in uh, producing related to discovery, in a sense, the discovery is the process of obtaining evidences to prove and claim and obtaining with the evidences may uh, admi ad ad admissible in uh, which the country is under which conditions. A further complication is the fact of judgments and handed out in the court in the another country may be uh, enforceable in the home country. For all these reasons, many countries or many companies prefer to pursue the attribution before the proceeding of uh, litigates. Alternative to litigations and dispute settlements. In 1995, the Cuban government uh, ab abruptly cancelled the contracts with uh, INSEA, a Spanish utility company. Rather than the sick uh, restrictions to the a Cuban court, the Indisa turned to the International Arbitration uh, Tribunal in Paris and seeking damage of $12 million. Indisa's action illustrates how the alternative of disputes resolution, that is ADR method, allows the parties to resolve the international commercial disputes without restoring the court system. Formal uh, arbitration is one of the means of settling the international business disputes outside the courtroom. Arbitration is the negotiation process that is yes, arbitration is the negotiation process that the two parties have by prior agreement uh, committed themselves to using. It is the fair process in the sense that the parties use to have the created it themselves. Generally, uh, arbitration involves hearing of the two parties before the three, pan, uh, three panel members. So each party selects one panel member and uh, those two panel members in turn select the third member. The panel uh, renders a judgment that parties agree to abide in advance. So last part uh, of the chapter, regulatory environment. The regulatory environment of the global market team consists of a variety of governmental and non-governmental agencies that enforces laws to set the guidelines for conducting the business. These uh, regulatory agencies uh, address a wide range of marketing issues, including the price control, valuation of the imports, exports, then uh, trade practices, then labeling, then food and drug regulations, employment conditions, uh, collective bargaining, advertising contents and competitive practices. Uh, in uh, uh, in the most countries, you must have uh, seen that uh, in India there is green dot uh, in a green square that indicates the uh, product as uh, having only vegetarian content. Similarly, there is a red dot in the red line square that indicates uh, the product contains some uh, non-vegetarian type of thing. Also, we are having egg mark uh, as the uh, stamp. So, uh, facade, F F C A A T. Uh, okay, that is uh, mandatory for the food. Also, for the food ingredient, it is uh, mandatory to mention what type of ingredients you have used and uh, what are the uh, what are the uh, contents. Like in Ayurvedic, also in pharmaceutical, also. So, it contains uh, what is the extract of uh, the formulation of that product that is mandatory also that uh, suppose you are eating chips then how many calories are there what is the percentage of trans fat what is the percent of fat uh, 
oil and uh, sugar had salt etc so that everything in percent that is composition you have to mention so in most of the countries the influence of regulatory agencies in pursuance uh, and the understanding of how they operate is essential to protect their business interests and advance new programs executives at the many global companies are realizing the need of the higher lobbies in the uh, represents that interest and influence the direction of the regulatory process for example in 1990s the mcdonalds nike and toyota did not have a single representative in brussels today each of these company have several people representing that interests uh, interest in european commissions the us law firms and consulting firms uh, also have sharply increased their presence in brussels it is the efforts to gain the insights from european uh, union uh, politics and access to the policy makers that some have to hire the eu officials in all there are currently approximately 15000 lobbyists in brussels representing approximately 1400 companies and non profit organization from the entire world regional economic organization that is eu an example the overall importance of the regional organization such as wto and uh, united uh, sorry uh, european uh, unions we have discussed in the previous chapter uh, that is chapter number 3 uh, previous to previous chapter this is fifth so the legal dimensions are important uh, however uh, and we'll have some briefly mentioned here the treaty of rome established in european countries that is ec and uh, the treaty created the institutional framework for the council that is council of ministers serves the main decision making law body with each country member having the direct representation just read this example then we will go to the summary okay so one by one we will read summary if uh, tamendra tamendra are you there yes sir okay tamendra can you please read for us uh, yes yeah, sir first the political environment of global marketing is in set of governmental institutions political parties and organizations that are the expression of the people in the nations of the world in particular anyone engaged in global marketing should have an overall understanding of the importance of sovereignty to nation governments <clears throat> the political environments varies from country to country and political risk assessment is crucial it is also important to understand a particular government section with respect to taxes and seizures <coughs> of assets so what do you mean by seizures of assets shrinking type of things yeah uh, historical the latter have taken the form of expropriations con exploitations yes you yes, have sir. seen all these meanings in the uh, discussion i have discussed the uh, definition of nationalization then uh, confiscations and expropriation all i have discussed yes sir okay next uh, okay any other person jay i think yes, one sir. more student was there i think he left ah uh, chinmay was there chinmay yes just give me reminder because i have to mark attendance or just tell uh, him to just be there for 2 or 3 minutes i think one girl also was there in the beginning i don't know then i have to click the photo of your attendance just tell him to come for 1 2 minutes uh, i will click the photograph then he can left again 
Okay, till then, uh, Jay can read. Aditya, can you read? Yes, sir. I think Aditya is having a range problem. Yes, sir. Okay. Hello. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Some of the most important legal issues uh, pertain, pertain to, to the registration, anti trust, and the licensing. In addition, by the very is per, <coughs> bribery. In bribery means a lot. Good. Okay. Pervasive in many parts of the world. The Foreign Practices Act, FCPA applies to American companies operating abroad. Intellectual property protection is another critical issue. Okay, counterfeiting is a major problem in global marketing. It often involves infringement. Counterfeiting is a major problem in a global marketing. It often involves infringement of a company copyright patent or trademark ownership and the last is when a legal conflict arise companies can pursue the matter in a court or use arbitration yes so the regulatory environment consists of the agencies both governmental and non-governmental that enforces uh, laws or set guidelines for the conducting business global marketing activities can be affected by a number of international or regional economic organizations in Europe, for example, the European Union makes laws governing the member states. The World Trade Organization will have a broad impact on the global marketing activities in the years to come. Although all three environments are com complex in nature, as puts the marketers plan ahead to avoid the situations that might result in conflict, misunderstanding and outright the violation of the national laws. So discussion questions, what is sovereignty? why it is uh, important consideration in the political environment of the global marketing then describe some of the sources of political risk especially that forms can political risk can take place then uh, briefly describe some of the differences between the legal environment of a country that embraces the common law and uh, one that observes the civil law then global market marketers can avoid the legal conflicts by understanding the reason conflicts arises in the first place so and they identify and describe the uh, several legal issues that relates to global commerce so for example point of, from exam point of view uh, i think uh, these first two questions are important for this particular chapter so you can 